let's call the meeting to order. Is uh, Mr. Wilson present? Can he call the roll? Yes, Larry. You're on mute. I'm sorry, let me try again. Uh, Bernie Garitas? Here. William Hosea? Mary Beth Kasparcha? Margaret Clemens? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Okay, we have uh, three members and a quorum. Uh, in the event, uh, in the lack of a unanimous opinion, uh, the motion would fail and go to the next meeting. Just to Thank you. Let, let you know that. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Wilson, can you introduce the evidence? I sure will. Uh, I request that the following items be introduced as evidence for the next meeting. Monroe County Zoning Ordinance has adopted and amended Monroe County Comprehensive Plan, has adopted and amended. Monroe County Subdivision Ordinance has adopted and amended. The rules of procedure of the Board of Zoning Appeals and the case is advertised and docketed for hearing on tonight's agenda. Is there a motion to approve the introduction of evidence? So moved. I second. So, okay. Uh, would you please call the roll, Mr. Wilson, again? It votes on the motion to introduce the evidence. Uh, Bernie Garitas? Yes. Uh, Margaret Clemens? Yes. Uh, Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Motion to introduce the evidence is approved. Um, then we move on to the approval of tonight's agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as published? So moved. Second. Mr. Wilson? Yeah, the vote is on the motion to approve the agenda as uh, advertised. Uh, motion to, a favorable motion is motion to approve that agenda. Uh, Bernie Garitas? Yes. Barbara Clements? Yes. Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Uh, the agenda is approved. And then the, there are the minutes from the August 5th meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Move to approve the minutes of August 5th, 2020. Second. Okay, the motion is to approve, approve the minutes from the August 5th Board of Zoning Appeals meeting. Uh, again, a motion to Favor motion is a motion to approve the, the amendments and accept them. Uh, Bernie Garitas? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Okay. Minutes from August 5th are approved. Uh, is there any administrative business to discuss? I have none. Okay, well, let's move on to old business first. The first item on our agenda is case number 1812-VAR-40, and that's the Papsner General Contractor Use Variance to Chapter 802. Um, staff, would you please present the case? Sure, thank you, Margaret. So thank you. Uh, I'll run through this one fairly quickly. I think most of you have heard it by now. This is a use variance request and some of the history on this site, it actually started in December, 2018. And um, it's been continued to give the petitioner, Mr. Patzner, a little bit more time to move the Riverway plumbing business from an estate residential zoned property to a business zoned property, which he's in the process of doing. Um, to date, the petitioner is on the call tonight. He states that he's 80% finished. I just want to give you a visual where the property is located is this red triangle and where he'll be moving the business to uh, that's actively being built is the yellow square. So he's moving right across the street um, and hopes to be completed as soon as possible. But uh, right now, before you is a use variance for uh, general contractor use in a residential zone. So again, here we are uh, off of uh, South Walnut Street, Old State Road 37, state residential zoning. Um, the petitioner has a, an accessory structure and then a home on the property that's rented full time. And then in the comprehensive plan, mixed residential. Um, I'm pulling in a um, 
pictometry view of the property from April 20th, 2020. So you can kind of tell um, this is a little bit more than a, a home-based business. It is um, definitely a general contractor use that would not be permitted uh, at the site. So um, what, what we're hoping to do here is get a decision or um, it could be approve, deny, or continue are the choices. And so staff at this point is still keeping with the recommendation of denial. Do you have any questions? Uh, Jackie, I do have a question. Are you asking for a denial on the old property or the new property? Good question, Vicki. So this is specifically on the current property that they're located at. So let me just okay. back up. Uh, that's this property, which is zoned as state residential. Yeah, they are already approved for building permits at the new property. They're just not quite finished yet. Okay. Thank you. So before the petitioner, this is Bernie. So basically what we're seeing here is Mr. Patsner is working on his new site. And then once the new site is developed out to where he can utilize it, then his plan is to move from the, the red triangle to the yellow, yellow square. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. That's all I've got until I hear from the petitioner. Thanks. Thanks, Jackie. Yeah, and, and just to clarify, um, this has been continued for a time uh, and not had a decision on it in part because once the petitioner moves and closes down the business use on the property, the case will be moot. I have another question, Jackie. Sure. As long as he remains at uh, his current place while the new one is being constructed uh, and we deny this, does he have to pay a fine or anything for being at the old place? That's a good question. So it has not been under enforcement as he has applied for a use variance to avoid okay. any type of fines or any okay. other action. Thank you. Okay, uh, is Mr. Uh, Potzner present and would he like to address the plan commission? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I am here. Uh, Mr. Uh, would I would like to swear you in. Could you please uh, raise your right hand and uh, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay, now please uh, proceed with addressing the plan commission. Um, as of right now, uh, I mean, we're starting to paint the inside. Uh, the floor is going to be poured next week. That's finished floor. Uh, basically, we're going to be putting doors in and hopefully, hopefully by December, I'm completely moved over. Um, you know, like I said, COVID kind of put a little damper on the scheduling and lumber and windows and you know, I thought I'd be in November 1st, but, you know, as everybody knows and everything is being delayed. I mean, I, my garage sales are, my garage doors are still two to three weeks out. Okay. Um, does anyone ha have any questions for Mr. Posner? Uh, seeing none, is there any uh, member of the public who would also like to speak in favor of this um, petition? If there's none, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the petition? If there's none, we could entertain a motion or a further discussion among the plan commission. I can make a motion, Madam Chairman, if. Uh... Everyone's okay with that. Thank you, Mr. Garitas. In the matter of uh, case number 1812-VAR-40, Paxner General Contractor Use Variance to Chapter 802, uh, located at 5605 South Old State Road 37, I move that we continue the petition uh, to enable Mr. Paxner to, comp to continue uh, construction of his facility where he can get a to continue working on his facility jackie will we need to do this until he receives an ilp or how would you recommend that we make a, a continuous motion 
I would recommend that you pick a, a future BZA date similar to what we've been doing so that we are following the notice procedures. So if, if you wanna say how many months out, I can give you the BZA date. Are we limited on the number of continuances that we can make on a petition? My understanding is the Board of Zoning Appeals does not have a limit, but the petitioner, if they were to request it, is limited to three. So no, you can continue it. Okay. Uh, if there's no heartburn by the board, I would say that we continue this to the April 2021 meeting, and that should give him plenty of time to construct, move his uh, business over there, and then this just automatically dies. Uh, that's It'll my suggestion, April, but I'm open to April, April 7th. April 7th, 2021. I move that we continue it to that date. I second. Mr. Wilson. Um, I think you're still muted, Mr. Wilson. Got it. Okay. okay. Uh, the Thank motion you. is to continue uh, uh, petition 1812 40 uh, the Panthers General Contractor Use Variance to the April 17th, 2021 BZA meeting. Uh, motion uh, favorable, uh, yes vote is a vote to approve the continuance. Margaret Larry, Clinton. it's April 7th, just to clarify. Okay, April 7th, 2021. Uh, again, a vote in favor is vote to approve the continuance to the April 7th, 2021 meeting. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Biggie Sorensen? Yes. Bernie Giratas? Yes. Uh, the continuance is approved by a three to one, three to zero vote. Good luck, Mr. Pastor. We wish you the best of all good things. Okay, moving on. We have uh, new business, case number 2010-VAR-68, the Jason Hawkins minimum lot size variance from Chapter 804 for property located at 7087 North Tunnel Road. Uh, staff, could you please present the case? Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> so this is a minimum lot size uh, request, variance request from chapter 804. Um, Jackie, do you wanna, can you, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, um, yes. thanks. Jackie, do you want to go to the next slide? Thank you. Um, so it's located on Tunnel Road um, and it is currently zoned Forest Reserve. Next slide. Uh, there are slopes on this property, mainly on the northwest corner of the lot, um, but none where the petitioner is proposing to locate his garage. Um, so let me back up and just say that the, the reason the petitioner is requesting a variance here is because he would like to uh, build a new 36 foot by 36 foot garage um, just to the kind of west and a little bit south of the house. Um, that it's tiny, but you can see it. Jackie's hovering over it right there. Um, and this parcel is designated farm and forest in the comprehensive plan. Here we have some site photos. Um, it's this, the, the garage that you see on, in the picture on the left um, is existing. Um, and it has been the victim of uh, a groundhog that has essentially rendered it useless due to the foundation damage that he, the groundhog has caused. Uh, so the petitioner is taking advantage of uh, this opportunity more or less to uh, construct a new garage um, that's slightly bigger than this existing one. Hopefully the groundhog won't make an appearance again. Uh, this is Tunnel Road. Um, looking 
north and south. This is this is a picture of um, some of the damage that the groundhog has caused inside the garage. And that is the very groundhog. Um, the petitioner was able to take a picture of it. Um, uh, obviously, he's not that concerned about the havoc he's wreaked. Um, but yes, inside the garage is completely uh, damaged, essentially. Uh, so this is the letter to the petitioners wrote to the Board of Zoning Appeals um, asking for this request. Um, on the right, we've got a site plan. Um, again, they are hoping to construct a new garage, 36 by 36. Um, they have four acres um, and what is required in this forest reserve zone is five acres. Um, so this is the reason they are here tonight um, for a request to the minimum lot size variance. And here is a, a picture of um, a, a map of surrounding parcels uh, illustrating other adjacent lots that also don't meet the minimum lot size. And so based on um, our findings of fact, Staff recommends that we approve that you approve the design standards variance to the minimum lot size standard in Chapter 804 based on findings of fact. Are there any questions? Are there any questions um, of staff? Well, is the petitioner present, and would the petitioner like to uh, address the plan commission? Jackie, do you see if, if anyone is present? I think that this um, person, yeah. Highway uh, Hawkins. Yes. Is that you, Jason? Can you hear us? I'm not sure, tech services, do you know if this person um, promoted to panelist has an audio capability? Not Sorry, I had a uh, just problem. It looks like their audio is enabled, um, but it may be that Zoom isn't recognizing the particular mic that they're using. Okay. Um, you know what? That might have been my petitioner calling. <laughs> oh. Do you know what their phone number is, Rebecca? Sorry, this is kind of a new format for us, so we're trying to learn how um, to promote. You know what, just, I think this is the petitioner. Just one second, okay? Okay. Definitely a sign of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can I can attest to the damage that, it, that that groundhog can do on the foundation of a building like that. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I don't think I would have used a camera to get that <laughs> shot, so to speak. He looked very satiated, <laughs> that groundhog. Um, while we're waiting for Rebecca, tech services, could you explain for people that are attendees on this Zoom call how they could alert us that they would wish to speak? All right, uh, so the best way is to do the raised hand feature um, if you're um, on like the app or the web browser or something like that. Um, it should be either an icon in the top left or at the bottom. Um, it just says raise hand. Um, and it'll alert us that uh, the person needs to talk. Okay, thank you. Rebecca? Yeah, so he, the petitioner is saying he's calling in to the number, but is getting notification that he's muted. So he ha he's not able to log in. What is the number? Um, do you see 812-322-0230? I see 3220931. Jason, what's your number? Mm 
Okay, hang on one second. Um, all right, 812-825-5347 is what the number he is calling from. I'm going to try this number and see what happens. Um, Can he call you, Rebecca, and you put him on speakerphone? that i mean i have him on the line right now oh great if you, you want to try it that way yes that would be okay sure okay let me just let me just hey hey jason yeah we're gonna try this work around where i put you on speakerphone um so that you can just sort of speak to the board um this way instead of uh dialing in or logging on. Does that sound okay? Yeah, it sounds great. Thank you. Okay. Now, can everybody hear him? Yes. Mr. Hawkins, um, I just would like to swear you in. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Now, please proceed with uh, what you'd like to state to the plan commission or to the Board of Zoning Appeals. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. This property has been in my family like three generations. This garage is built back in the early 50s. We're just basically wanting to change the size of it a few feet. I've tried to repair the damage over the last four or five years. It's beyond repair at this point. And we're just wanting to replace it with a new garage and be able to utilize the space on the property. That makes sense. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of this request? Who is present? Or is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this request? And Jackie, if you see no one, then we could entertain a motion. You can do that. Thank you. Uh, in case number 2010-VAR-68, Jason Hawkins, minimum lot size variance from chapter 804 located at 7087 North Tunnel Road. I move that we approve the variance of the minimum lot size standard in chapter 804, subject to the uh, staff report and the findings found therein. Second. And the uh, motion is on uh, petition number 2010-VR-68, uh, Jason Hawkins minimum lot size variance a yes vote is a vote to approve the granting of the development standards variance. Vicki Sorson? Yes. Rudy Garitas? We all we ask for public comment, correct? Yes. Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Okay, the variance is approved by a three to zero vote. Thank you, Mr. Hawkins. Good luck with uh, the diet of your gopher, <laughs> your groundhog. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're moving on to case number 2009-VAR-69, the Souders Side Yard Setback Variance uh, for a parcel in Perry Township, Section 27 at 1750 West Vera Lane. Uh, I think this is Tammy's case. I'm going to go ahead and cover this one since Tammy's on vacation. I want to make clear quickly that the agenda listed the address uh, slightly incorrectly. So it's 1750 East Vera Lane. Okay. Uh, but there is no West Vera Lane in the county. So I think Great. we're okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for letting us know. Sure. So um, this property is requesting a variance to have a after the fact permit for a lean to that's into the side setback become um, conforming by use of a variance. And then um, the lean to currently is about a half a foot off of the property line. So this is the location here um, off of South Fairfax, the Vera Lane. And then you have the uh, zoning here as suburban residential um, in the comprehensive plan, you have it as suburban residential as well. Um, and then you have a kind of a slope area map here. The property is fairly flat. And the area we're discussing is this Western property line. 
So here are some site photos. Um, the property did uh, property owner did reach out and get a survey from Phil Tapp, so they are sure that the setback is about a half of a foot. And the, the lean to we're talking about in this image is, is right here where the cursor is. So um, an aerial imagery of the same shot from 2006, um, the petitioner added a lean to in the time period. Um, and when they applied for other building permits, we just verified that all permits on the property had been received. And so we were able to issue two after the fact permits for um, these extensions of the property, but this lean to was unfortunately in the setback and they've since removed this carport. So this is the only reason that we're discussing this case tonight, the BZA. It's a seven by 21 uh, lean to just barely over the 120 square foot trigger for needing a permit. It's about 143 square feet, if I remember correctly. So um, another aerial image of the property, you can see that there is a neighbor um, fairly close by on the west side, um, the petitioner's letter, and then also their site plan. So um, on the bottom right, you'll see that there was a, um, as I mentioned, a survey done by Phil Tapp, and they're showing uh, existing garage a half foot east of the line, and it's required to be at least five feet. And this property is in a platted subdivision, so there's no easements, but it is the zoning setback here. So staff is recommending denial based on um, findings of facts, specifically B1 and finding C. And I will take any questions that you might have. Do any members of the plan commission have questions for Ms. Nestor? Well, if none, uh, I'd like- Yeah, I've got a quick one there, Margaret. I'm sorry. Oh, oh thank um, you. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. Have, have there been any, as the neighbor to the, as the adjacent neighbor on the side of the lean to it, have they, I didn't see anything in the packet, but I may have missed any sort of letter or any remonstration against it. That's a good question, Bernie. Um, I do believe there might have been some call-in questions, but no formal remonstrance. Um, and as it relates to um, just drainage, questions through here. But as I mentioned, there's no easements like drainage easements um, formally on this property. But as you know, side setbacks can be over time used as a good way to get water um, from the street to the back of the property without hitting anyone's foundation. And then my question, if it's okay, um, if the lean, is he asking for um, permission to keep the lean-to, or if the lean-to is taken away, then we approve the setback? Yeah, good question, Vicki. So if, if the lean-to, let's say the variance is denied, they'll be required to remove the lean-to, and then there won't be a side setback encroachment. Okay. So the request is to keep the lean-to. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Souders, are you present, and would you like to address the plan commission? If so, please raise your hand on the Zoom to be recognized by, by the BZA. I'm gonna quickly just check the case file and see if I can find um, the petitioner's number and they may be one of the few calling in. Um, so just a moment. I don't see them on the call. Okay. Is there any member of the public who would like to speak in favor of this petition?
And if there's none, is there any member of the public who would like to speak in opposition to this petition? Well, then uh, we can come back and discuss it among ourselves or entertain a motion. I have another question, Margaret. Yes. Is he willing to tear down the lane to? If, what, do you know what he uses it for? It's a good question, Vicki. So um, as part of the requirement for building permits, if we see anything that doesn't have a permit and we request that it receives an after the fact, if it, if it doesn't apply for a demolition permit, we can do one of two things. We can withhold the other permits on the property or we can um, start an enforcement case and request that they uh, basically alleviate the need for enforcement by applying for a demolition permit for the lean to. Thank you. Well, I'm inclined to continue this only because the petitioner is not here to, for whatever reason. I mean, we've, we've already experienced that this evening on another petition. Uh, and with a with a minimum form this evening, I think it I think it might serve everybody better to a, give him an opportunity to to be here and then b for you know at least at least more members of the BZA to be attending. And I don't fault anybody for not being here, but those two in combo seem to be might be ripe for a continuance. I think that's a great idea. Um, is that an invitation? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, in the matter of 2009-BAR-69, Souter Side Yard Setback Bearing from Chapter 804, uh, located at 1750 East Beer Lane, I move continuing the petition uh, until the November, or pardon me, the December 2nd second. Second Board of Zoning Appeals meeting. I second. Okay, the uh, motion is continued. Uh, petition 2009-69, the Southern uh, Side Yard Setback uh, Variance from 804. Uh, motion is continued to the December 2nd, 2020 BZA meeting. A vote in favor is a vote to grant the continuance or to continue the matter. B. Garitas? Yes. Mark Clements? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Okay, the uh, contingency is approved by a three to zero vote. Okay, thank you very much. Now the next case is uh, the request for two variances and those are 2009-VAR-70 and 2009-VAR-71, the Jared Huff minimum lot size variance and the Jared Huff side yard setback variance. Um, I think it is, oh, I don't know who will be presenting the case, but is that you, Jackie? Yeah, I'll go ahead and take this one too, Margaret. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Okay, so um, just a summary of the request here for an accessory structure, the minimum lot size is AGRR, which requires two and a half acres, and the lot size is only 1.27 acres. Um, the side yard setback for the zoning is 15 feet and the requested side setback is five feet. So there are some considerations of this lot, which we'll get into. It is a corner lot, um, which says that there's only a front and side setback. Um, the front setback can be quite restrictive um, in many areas. Uh, and then the proposed accessory use structure is uh, less than 15 feet in height. Um, and so there is a provision that they can have a smaller rear setback if they were able to have one um, in this zone of only five feet. So just keeping that in mind um, as well as future septic site locations. Um, so here's the property location in Bean Blossom Township. As I mentioned, the zoning is AGRR here on the corner of 46 and Steinsville. The comprehensive plan has this is farm and forest and uh, the property site is fairly flat. And where I'm showing my mouse is the relative location of their proposed structure. So as you can see from this map, there's quite a few lots in this area that don't meet the two and a half acre minimum. 
Um, there were some petition site photos uh, of the site. So with the orange arrow is kind of showing you a view of where the proposed accessory structure would be located. Uh, and then also these red corner markers as well, just showing you kind of the site photos. There's an existing buffer of landscaping. Um, again, more photos of where the accessory structure would be located. They have it staked out here. Um, and then some aerial photos to give you an idea, uh, just kind of on the property where we're looking. This green pen is just to show you like the property, not actually where they're gonna put the, the structure. The structure is more like where the cars are parked. So because it's a corner lot, they have front setbacks on all of the streets. And then this has to be a side setback. So as you saw in the beginning, if this were um, a regular shaped square lot and there was a rear setback, um, that there could be an accommodation in the zoning ordinance to allow for just a five foot setback, but because um, it's considered a, a corner lot and it's a side setback, it's 15 feet is the required setback here instead of five. Uh, here's the petitioner letter, which is um, in the packet as well. And then the petitioner um, site plan here as well. So 32 by 40 accessory structure. And then you have the location of the existing septic site, um, which leaves the petitioner with very few choices in terms of where else to put the accessory structure um, that would be meeting this uh, setback and some also some trees that are in consideration as well. So um, staff did just do a check on the measurement of the height, making sure that it was under the 15 feet um, and it measured out to about 14 and a half feet. Um, here is also the health department's um, kind of redrawing of the septic system as well. Um, so the staff's recommended motion in this case is to approve the minimum lot size standards from chapter 804, as well as approve the side yard setback from uh, chapter 804 based on the findings effect. I'll take Thank any questions. You. Are there any questions of Jackie? If there are none, is Mr. Huff present or his representative? And would you like to address the, plan, the Board of Zoning Appeals? I see one new caller on the call. So just a reminder that if, if you wish to speak, um, if you can raise your hand in the function on the screen. Um, again, I'm gonna try and multitask here and see if I could find um, the petitioner's phone number. It might be a good idea, just a suggestion of, on these petitions. Hopefully we won't be Zooming for the rest of our lives. But if it we're continuing in the short term, maybe recommend the petitioner email the staff member or the planning office that they're going to be on the line and their phone number or yes. whatever device they're using, just to suggest. Yes, that'd be a great idea. I'm worried that since um, I'm covering this one for Tammy, they may not yeah. have realized that. So um, I think I see this person's number, so I'm gonna allow them to speak. Uh, Jared Huff, can you hear us? Uh, tech services, I think it's the two, two, seven, or sorry, the two, seven, two, uh, seven, six, seven, four. And if I ask them to unmute, they have to press unmute on their side. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, I also hit the ask to unmute. So um, if they don't respond and hit it, then, oh, okay. it looks like they just unmuted. Okay. Jared Huff, can you hear us? All right, I'm not sure what the audio issue is, um, but if you can hear us, um, I'm not sure if tech services, is there anything that we can do if they're not, if do their phone a, isn't. Do you have a telephone you could uh, dial that number? Sure, sure, mm -hmm. yep. Okay, give me just one second. Sure. 
I was going to tell them to blink twice, Margaret, if they could hear us. <laughs> and click their heels. I'm just going to put this one second. Hello? Mr. Huff? Uh, do you, yes, it's um, me. <laughs> thank you for attending tonight's meeting and thank you for your patience as we manage this new technology. Um, yes. Would you please? Uh, I'm sorry, could you please raise your right hand and uh, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Now, uh, we're anxious to hear what you might uh, like to say to the Board of Zoning Appeals regarding this request. Um, I really don't know what to say. It's the first <laughs> time I've ever done anything like this. So. <laughs> it's all kind of confusing to me and everything. I just really appreciate it. I kind of need the extra space for uh, just hobbies, basically. And uh, well, don't uh, you don't have to go into too much detail. We're just giving you an opportunity to uh, make any additional requests that weren't um, presented by the staff during the presentation. Okay. Was the height of it? Does that does that matter? I heard you guys talking about the height being under 15 foot. <clears throat> well, that was Is a that good something? thing. That was a good thing that it's under 15 feet. So um, okay. I, I think that's okay. Um, and if you feel comfortable with the way that the case was presented, I'll just, I'm obliged to request um, or uh, ask if there's anybody else who is a member of the public who would like to address the Board of Zoning Appeals about this case okay oh i think it went great i mean thank you so much thank you and thank you for attending tonight now, thank you is, thank you is there an, any other member of uh, the public who would like to uh address the board of zoning appeals either in favor or in opposition to this request i'm not seeing anyone margaret thank you well in that case i entertain a motion I've got a quick comment. So the yes. house was built in 1950. Is that correct, Jackie? Yes, I believe so. Yes. So it's a one point and it's 1.27 or 1 1.3 acres. Mm -hmm. So we've got a parcel that was created in the house built basically before the current zoning ordinance. And while the, you know, the, the, if, if for anything else for title purposes, clearing it up is a good thing. But I just want to say that this is probably another example where a hearing officer would be very useful and uh, could probably make a determination on a case like this without much ire. Of course, a hearing officer always has the opportunity to kick it to the the BZA or wherever it needs to go. So with that, I can make a motion. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to do both of these together. Uh, Case number 2009-VAR-70 and case 2009-VAR-71, Jared Huff minimum lot size variance from chapter 804 and Jared Huff side yard setback variance from cha chapter 804 respectively, located at uh, 7525 North Steinsville Road. I move that we approve those two variances based on the staff report and the findings of fact found therein. Second. Mr. Wilson. Yes, the uh, motion is to approve both 2009 VRS 70 and 2009 VRS 71, the Jared Huff lot size and side yard setback variance requests respectively. The vote in favor is the vote to approve both the all the standard variances. Margaret Clements. Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Bernie Giratas? Yes. Variances are approved by a three to zero vote. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Huff, for coming in, zooming in with thank us. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thanks. Bye.
Thank you. Um, we're moving on to the next case that also involves two variances. And uh, the first variance is 2009-VAR-72. It's Rogers and Country Club digital sign variance to chapter 807 and 2009-VAR-73, the Rogers and Country Club landscaping variance to chapter 830. Um, uh, I'm not sure who's presenting this case. It's one, this one's me as well, Margaret. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing so much, Jack. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Okay, so this is a uh, two variance request, as you mentioned, first for digital signs, which are prohibited under the zoning ordinance. And the second one is for the landscaping requirements that are required for commercial development of properties. So um, just a quick summary of the requests here. They had previously, the petitioner had previously come to the BZA for a digital sign request and they've actually been granted 4.75 square feet of digital signage. And uh, they've recently wanted to increase that to 16.9 square feet. So in order to do so, they have to come back for another variance. Um, additionally, the landscaping here, the site is pretty small as you probably know it's about a quarter of an acre. And so um, typically with that uh, commercial sites in the county, we require a certain width where landscaping can fit comfortably, but because of their previous variances to shore up the size of the area devoted to buffer yards to um, about two feet and 10 feet, um, they are running out of room physically to plant enough plants that are required. So they have about 786 D value, which equivalents, is equivalent to about 99 shrubs. And um, what they're missing is approximately, uh, if you were to calculate it out in just shrubs, 137. So they're a little less than half of the required landscaping on this site. So the site is Country Club and Rogers. Uh, the zoning is limited business. The uh, old building here is no longer, but the site is very flat and has access to utilities and is at the intersection um, with uh, ingress egress out of both uh, Country Club and Rogers. The comprehensive plan has this area as mixed residential. Um, and I wanted to show quickly kind of the site plan for the signs that they're proposing. And then I'll also show the site plan for the landscaping that they're missing. So uh, focus here on D1, D2, and D3. Those are the three locations for the digital signs. Signs are permitted to be located at these locations, but the uh, question in the matter for the BZA tonight is the digital sign. So that is copy that can change based on um, you know gas prices is what's being considered tonight so diesel or uh, regular gas pricing so i have some uh, schematics for you here just to kind of show you what those signs would look like what they're proposing and collectively they add up to uh, six over 16 square feet of signage so um, this side is, is kind of facing the south side of the building, but you're looking north, and uh, this is the first sign location. This side would be catching the people that would be going west on Country Club. So this is the uh, east side of the building. And then you have facing the intersection of Country Club and Rogers. Um, this is the sign being proposed. Now, I'll mention that uh, without getting too much into um, the sign ordinance, but um, a sign is permitted to be located here. It's just the um, digital portion of the sign that is in question. Oh, and I'll also point out previously, this was the uh, sign over here on the right, the mobile sign. Um, this sign was what was requested and uh, approved for the 4.75 square feet. So they've since switched to a different sign company and, and company altogether and, and are now requesting an increase. Um, here you have the landscaping that is missing. So um, along the eastern side of the property is the buffer yard. Um, and then along the south side is the buffer yard and bioretention area. So you'll see in the packet that we have comments from Terry Quillman and Connie Griffin of the stormwater department. And um, they're very sure that landscaping does need to be located here as part of a filtration to catch any oils and grease leaving the site. Um, and then I also have a, a yellow square here. There's a few plants missing here, 
but um, primarily it's on these, this east side and this south side. Um, I will note from a perspective of staff, in order for the amount of landscaping to go in that needs to go in, um, we would be uh, probably requiring the petitioner to take up some of the asphalt and um, putting in new landscaping because it, it physically won't fit. And the other requirement is that landscaping has to be kept in, in perpetuity. So uh, just a few site photos here, the parking island facing Rogers here. This one did have all the landscaping that was needed. Uh, this photo on the right is the two foot landscaped area that's missing some landscaping. And then I also have a shot kind of looking towards the country club area. Um, and then lastly, the bioretention area as I understand it has only been planted with grass. Um, it does have this riprap to kind of catch water that runs off the site, um, but I did include both Terry and Connie's comments um, that they would like to see landscaping located in this area. Um, so staff is recommending denial for both of these variance requests um, based on the findings. And I can take any questions you may have. This is kind of more Unusual case for the BZA, so happy to answer your questions. And I think the petitioner is also here, but I will double check that. Thank you. Thank you. Does uh, any member of the board have questions for Jackie? Yeah, Jackie, a quick one here. Can you zoom back to the the site plan you had with the yellow and red box, uh, excuse me, polygons or rectangles? Yeah, so what was the last variance that we granted from what was the last, describe the last variance again for me, please, while I can look at the map. Sure, yeah, I'm actually, that's a good plan. Um, let me go ahead and describe to you all the prior variances on sorry the about, site. Sorry about that, but it no, goes that's, directly into what Connie and Terry were talking about in my mind. Yeah, exactly. So um, let me kind of summarize what we've had going on here. So they received a front setback variance for the location of the building. Um, and that was in June 2017. They received a landscaping buffer yard with uh, that included this east line and this south line. Um, and that was in June 2017 and July later in July 2019 for this eastern side because of uh, emergency vehicles. If a car is parked at this uh, pump and another car were to pass, a third vehicle um, would not be able to make it. So they were concerned after a trip by the fire department that um, there wasn't physically enough room here for emergency vehicles if there were an issue. They've received a uh, variance for the minimum number of parking spaces needed. So they're supposed to have seven spaces and they have six spaces. That was in June of 2017. Um, they received a digital sign uh, for 4.75 square feet. And then also they were allowed to place the digital sign within five feet of the property line instead of the required 10 feet. So those were both in June, 2019. Okay, so the variances with respect to the buffer yards, that was a width variance, but not a landscape variance. Is that correct? Yes, and at that time staff did request that the uh, petitioner consider applying for a variance for the landscaping. Um, but they stated that they could meet the requirement and they actually submitted engineered plan sets that showed that they were able to meet the landscaping requirement. So um, this is after, you know, since 2019 to now, they've located in the building. We've issued temporary um, occupancy at the site and just have kind of extended that. And this is the kind of the last effort to try and close out the site officially. And these are the two remaining things. Okay, can you show the photo that shows the south property line? Sure. Do we know if the elevation off that parking drains to the east or to, as I'm looking at the photo to the left or towards the bend fence, the, the board fence, does it drain that way or does it go back towards the building there? It's a good question, Bernie. So uh, I think it may be a little bit of an optical illusion. It does um, drain this way. I'll also note that behind me is the dumpster and a lot of the site is actually draining to the corner where the dumpster is. And there's like a kind of a catch 
basin that is has some riprap on it that does take in a lot of water as well. So that's behind me. And so a lot of the site was meant to drain to the south. Okay, I think that's all I've got right now. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you. Vicki, do you have any questions? I do, uh, just to kind of bring me up to date. Um, so I saw in uh, the summary, all digital copy signs are prohibited in the county. So is this part of the county and part of city? How did they get a variance to get a digital sign if the county says no to? Good question. So this property is fully located in the county but the uh, Country Club Street is actually the city. So there has been some collaboration on this part. Um, but the um, petitioner actually requested a design standards variant similar to today uh, that they're asking for. Um, and they were, they were granted the 4.75 square feet prior. So now they just wanna increase that to 16.9, I believe. Um, and the, so in order to do that, they need another variance. Okay. And then another question going kind of back to the shrubbery and all that, uh, you mentioned that they'd have to tear up some asphalt. Where would that be that they'd have to tear it up uh, to add landscaping? Yeah, it's a good question, Vicki. Oh, sorry, I'm going the wrong direction. Um, so um, there is a possibility that they could tear up this east side a little bit to add landscaping here. You'll note that the dumpster location is kind of in the way. They also have uh, since located, I think, a, an air pumping site here. And I notice a lot of people when they're not able to find a parking space here are actually kind of parking here as well. Um, so this would really be the only location I could see without dis disturbing um, too much other uh, design standard requirements because you know the parking standards parking size has to be a certain width. Um, the aisle has to be a certain width. So you just can't, there's not a lot of room for movement on this site, I guess. And so in, in the original plans, did they think all this through or just a, as they were developing, things just kept coming along? You know, um, that's a good question for the petitioner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you, Jackie. Mm. Okay, is the petitioner or the petitioner's representative present and would you like to speak to the Board of Zoning Appeals? don't see them on, which is a little bit of a surprise. Um, checking my email one more time. Um, let me see. I don't see, I did email them this afternoon, so I'm a little surprised to not see them on the, on the call. Um, I may just unmute this uh, 322 number because that's the only number we haven't heard from, I think. So let me, let me just do that. Let's see if either of these numbers are. I don't think so. I'm, I'm pretty sure those aren't the petitioner, which is Rajesh Patel. Okay, uh, well then it's back to us. Uh, we can either continue this case or um, entertain a motion to either uh, approve it, disapprove it, or to continue it. Jackie, I've got another question because I, the, the fact that they got these, I remember this petition, the fact that they, we, we granted them a variance on these buffer yards to the east and to the south, is that a, is that an under drain I'm seeing coming out of that storm structure at the southwest corner of the property going east? Is there an under drain pipe there? What am I looking at there, that dashed line? Um, this, which dashed line? I'll kind of point to it. You tell me, if, is this the line? No, keep going. It's, it's in the red box coming directly out of the oh, east side. Yeah. Yes, this is. It does go straight to the storm sewer. 
Okay, so was there a medium in there for the for the the bioretention basin to allow percolation to go through that medium into another drain out into the storm mm -hmm. box? Yeah, there was um, on the plans that I reviewed. Um, there was supposed to be some sort of oil fil filtration. Is that what you're kind of getting at? Yeah, I'm just looking at how the water is going to get into that storm box because I'm not seeing any elevations or grades, but seeing that under drain that goes to the east, it appears that they've got something planned to capture the water in the red box. Yes. Have you spoken to the engine, the petitioner's engineer on this at all? Or is Terry or? Yeah, you know, we've done routine visits out there. Um, I know that Connie went out when they were doing the bioretention and, and there was at first an issue with the soil mix that they used. So they had to take that out and put it back in. So um, they've definitely, we've definitely been in touch with them as this has progressed, but there was planned landscaping to go in, even if it's just like grasses or shrubs, um, I can kind of pull up um, some grades if you'd like to to see the grading. Well, plan. I'm just curious if they're wanting to leave it the way it is, or if there's any attempt to put any sort of bioretention medium in that. You know, the east I line, see. it looks to me like it all kind of comes to the south just by looking at the way the site is. But mm -hmm. on that south line, I'm just curious, is, is there any attempt to, to put a landscape plan together that may capture some of this based on yeah. what their last variants asked for. Yeah, so I'm including um, the grading plan, which shows you that the water is kind of coming this way. Um, and they did follow the, the oversized river gravel here, um, bioswale location, and then they also did uh, turf reinforcement with compost sand topsoil mix. Um, so my understanding from the petitioner was they were working with a landscaping company and were concerned that the number of landscaping um, plants remaining would all have to go in this location. And so they were concerned that it would um, delay or disrupt the filtration of the bioretention system because they know this under drain is in there. Um, but Terry and Connie both are familiar with the site and disagree. So um, I think that there could be some movement um, if we were to get the petitioner to talk with a professional potentially and, and put in maybe some grasses, maybe not trees. I do understand that that can cause some disruption of pipes, but um, any landscaping is some landscaping and right now it's, it's grass, so. Well, that's kind of where I'm going with this. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna recommend a continuance because I mean, I, I think we need to get some input from Connie and, and especially Terry to see if there's even anything even possible here. But if the way it sits now, I don't think that we're meeting our MS4 operator or drainage engineers requirements. So I don't want to do a flat denial because I, a denial just means that they're going to be back because if something can't be built, they're going to, we're going to have to engage Terry anyway, correct? Yeah, I think that's a good plan to include the petitioner. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't want to keep continuing these because our petitions get long, but I, I, I also I want to just make sure we're doing our due diligence and understanding everything that's going on. And I frankly can't understand uh, ex exactly what the petitioner thinks he can accomplish here or what Terry thinks he's got a, they've got an issue with. So I can go ahead and make a, a motion, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you, Mr. Garitas. Okay, in the matters of 2009-VAR-72 and the matter of 2009-VAR-73, Rogers and Country Club sign, parentheses, digital variance to chapter 807, Rogers and Country Club landscaping variance to chapter 830 at 2801 South Rogers Street. I move we continue the petition until the December 2nd. Help me out, Jackie. Yes. December 2nd, Board of Zoning Appeals meeting. Second. Yeah, I call the roll. The, the uh, vote is on a motion to continue both variance 2009 ERF 72 and 73. The uh, Rogers and Country Club sign and landscaping various requests, respectively. Again, a vote in favor is a vote to continue both petitions 
the December 2nd, 2020 meeting. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Barbara Clements? Yes. Thank uh, you very much. Motion carries, and the, this matter will be heard on the December 2nd, 2020 meeting. Thank you very much. Moving on, we'll uh, go to case number 2009-VAR-74, the Prather use variance to chapter 802. Mr. Myers, would you pre please present the case? I don't think we can hear you, Drew. No, we can't hear you, Drew. Okay, now we can hear you, Drew. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, well, only one of the Bluetooth earbuds are working, so. <laughs> All right. Okay, so moving right along, this is the Jonathan Prather use variance, chapter 833. The petition site is a 2.0 acre lot located in Richland Township at 4655 West Woodyard Road. The petitioner is requesting a use variance in order to construct a 30 by 80 foot residential accessory structure. Uh, the current use of the property is single family detached dwellings, which is not permitted in the current zoning district of a limited industrial. Um, the current zoning designation of limited industrial uh, was assigned back when the city of Bloomington held jurisdiction in this area, which is in the two mile fringe. And it is staff's understanding that the zoning designation of IL in this area was due to the proximity of the adjoining railroad in the south. And that's why this area is uh, designated as such. According to the property report card, this property has a single family home constructed in 1920 uh, and has been used as a residence ever since. Therefore, the current use of the petition site is classified as pre-existing non-conforming use per chapter 803. And furthermore, um, that use is designated as um, unpermitted. Um, so any additional um, residential type uses on the property would be not would not be permitted. Um, the only way to go around this would be to apply for a use variance uh, like we are here tonight or apply for a rezone. Um, lastly, it should be noted that the neighboring property to the west at 4661 South Woodyard Road um, also requested a use variance for the same purpose of constructing a residential accessory structure um, in the past and that was in 2018. Um, that uh, petition received a vote of 4-0 for approval. Um, so here is the location map. As I said, it's in Richland Township. It's on Woodyard Road. Um, you can even see on that last map where the railroad track um, goes to the south of the property. Um, here's the current zoning map in the top left corner. Zoning is limited industrial. And then the comprehensive plan has it designated as Makua Employment. All right, site conditions. As I stated before, it's a two acre parcel. Um, it is not part of a subdivision plat and it derives access off of West Woodyard Road. And most of it is under the 15% slope uh, restriction. Here we have some aerial photography of the property. I'm getting an idea of uh, what's on the property and the look of it. another angle, uh, aerial photography, and then the next few uh, photographs will be on the ground. Um, here is the driveway point off of Woodyard Road and the existing um, single family residence that has been there for quite some time. More photographs here of the driveway and then panning to the backyard um, there are some structures that have been existing uh, for what look like have been some time. Um, and then I walk back through the property, um, looking back to the house. Um, and then the second photograph here is more of an idea of where the residential accessory structure will be placed. Um, in the left of that photograph, you can see another uh, white pole barn. That is the neighboring residential accessory structure that also received a similar use variance. 
Here is the uh, petitioner's letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, stating the size of the residential accessory structure and his intent to use it for storage and as a workspace. Um, and that workspace is not a, a commercial workspace. Um, there, will be, there will not be any commercial um, selling or anything like that out of the space. Um, here we have the petitioner's site plan. Um, it shows the uh, approximate location um, of, the, of the proposed um, accessory structure along with some measurements that they have provided here on this gridded paper. Overall, um, due to the, the findings of the use variance, which are uh, quite different than the normal uh, design standards variance petition, um, staff had to recommend denial of this petition based on the findings of fact, specifically finding D that the strict application of the terms of the zoning ordinance will not constitute an unnecessary hardship if applied to the property for which the variance is sought. And finding E, the approval would not be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Um, since the comprehensive plan has designated Makua employment, um, it was one of the findings that staff had to um, uh, not support. I will not take any questions. Do any members of the Board of Zoning Appeals have questions for Mr. Myers? I have a question. Thank you. Uh, so Drew, the neighbor that got approved, how did that come about? Sure. Um, so I looked at the minutes for that um, uh, approval and a lot of the discussion was based on um, that the home had been existing there for quite some time um, and that the uh, extension of a, a home in an area where uh, traditionally it has been um, residential um, was not that big of a, a, a hurdle to overcome for the board at that time. Um, their main concern during that uh, meeting was that the petitioner was also petitioning for a home-based business or home occupation to use that structure as as well. Um, so there was a lot of discussion that got hung up on the use of the residential accessory structure um, in that it wasn't just residential and that there was some sort of commercial type aspect to it. Um, overall, uh, it, it seemed like the board at that time um, reasoned with the petitioner that uh, since the city had zoned this um, industrial due to the proximity of the railroad, um, and that the residences kind of got caught up in that zoning um, that they felt they would approve ultimately that use variance. And so at this point, you don't feel like you can approve it and that's why you're denying it? So um, the findings for a use variance are um, fairly different than the design standards variance. Um, and they are quite difficult to support from a planning staff perspective. Um, specifically, finding D, um, my conclusion was that the strict application of the terms of the zoning ordinance will not constitute unnecessary hardship, um, meaning that they would not lose all ec reasonable economic use of the parcel if they were denied um, a residential type of use. Okay. Um, that's where I'm bound there. And then the finding E was for the comprehensive plan. Okay, thank you. Drew, have you got an aerial view of the of kind of the whole area out there? Uh, I know you do. Can you put that up on the screen? One of these, or do you want the um, like the uh, more of the like location, the larger area? Uh, maybe a larger photograph. Okay, yeah, that does it for me. Okay, thank you. Do you have any questions, Mr. Garitas? No, not right now, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, is Mr. Prather here and would uh, you like to address the Board of Zoning Appeals? Yes, I believe he's here and it should be Rhett Skateboarding. Okay. Okay, could you please state your name and um, for, for the board, Mr. Prather? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my name is Jonathan Prather. 
Um, would, would you please raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, please, uh, please tell us what you want to do and what your request is about. Cool. Thank you. Um, so basically, um, I have a very small house and a very old beat up barn that's currently, um, th th there's not a lot of uses for it and where it is and how messed up it is. So uh, basically, I just want to build a bigger sort of pole barn so that I have more room for um, a little bit of storage. Uh, as you can see, my name on here is Rhett Skateboarding. I own a small business downtown, the skateboard shop. I'll also use it as a place for me to skateboard a little bit in the wintertime. So um, yeah, that's basically, basically it. I just need a little bit more room. Okay. Um, is there any member of the public who would like to speak either in favor or in opposition to this uh, request? If there's no one, uh, I'll bring it back to the board for further discussion and or recommendation. So the, the your, Mr. Rhett Skateboard, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Frather, you're, you are plant, you're, you're concreting the floor in the building and the dimensions are 80 feet by 30 feet. What are they again? Yeah, 80 feet by 30 feet. Okay, this is kind of one of those areas. It's a mix between uses in the IL, but also, you know, there's a lot of residences in here and people just kind of want to enjoy their life. Uh, what I see about this proposal is that it could potentially be a transition between what Mr. Prather maybe wants to use it for now versus what it could go with the IL later. So those are, those are, those are kind of my thoughts and direction I'm headed. And I fully understand uh, staff's recommendation. It, it's right in line with, with, with what their responsibilities are. Well, if it goes to IL later, would, uh, would the pole barn interfere with that? Just to clarify, Margaret, the property is already zoned IL. Mm -hmm. So if it if in the county development ordinance that we're updating, if it gets rezoned to an employment zone, it would essentially still be under a non-conforming use. Uh, can I ask a question real quick? Sure. Um, so when I had approached, um, I think originally, I, I spoke to Jackie on the phone a couple of years ago about potentially trying to build something in my house just to have a little more space. And at the time, um, there was talk about this area being rezoned. And I'm not sure if, I mean, I, I was never told what it would be rezoned. And so, yeah, I, I just wasn't sure if, um, you know, if I, I, I guess if it, if it gets rezoned as like agricultural or something, you know, in my mind, this is a building that would kind of fit any of the in any of the zonings. If in if in the future someone were wanting to use this building or the space as a limited industrial, I feel like the building would probably still fit that. Correct. Well, that I'm going to jump in here. Uh, first of all, when you know when staff gives recommendations like that, they don't know what the crystal ball is later and until they see a petition, it's hard for them to judge whether or not they can tell you yes or no, but that's kind of where I'm leading is this, this structure has the potential to be useful in the IL zone. And, you know, I, I, I'm trying to think of a way to make it just kind of a placeholder until something like that might happen on that property. Maybe, maybe you would do something in on your entrepreneurial uh, interest that would, that would make it useful. I don't know, but I see this. The, this is a is a placeholder, but this is a use variance, not not necessarily for the structure. Is that a good way to explain it, Drew or or, or Jackie? 
Yeah, I think that's a good way to explain it. Um, the the reason the the use is pre-existing non-conforming is because it's residential in an, in an industrial zone. Um, so if any other type use were to go in on this property, um, the residential type use would have to cease first. Um, so uh, the structure um, as it's going in right now is under a residential accessory structure later down the road for whatever reason, if someone were to purchase the property and use it for its original zoning intention, they could tear down the home and use the structure as a, an industrial type use if they chose to do that. But um, the point of this use variance is to permit a uh, residential accessory structure um, on a property that doesn't permit residential type use. Does that answer your question, Mr. Prather? Uh, yeah, it, it answers my question. I mean, that's why I applied for a variance to be able to try to build one. <laughs> sure, sure, we understand that. Yeah. Well, um... I can make a motion. If it's not unanimous, it gets automatically continued. That's if it, right. if it If it succeeds, then uh we just keep on boogieing down the road right okay that's good so yes please okay in the matter of uh case number 2009-NAR-74 prather use variance to chapter 802 located at 4655 west woodyard road i move that we approve the use variance based on the findings of fact staff report uh submitted submitted in the packet I second. Okay, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, the vote is on uh, the Prather Use Variance Petition 2009 to GR74. A uh, vote in favor is vote to approve the use variance based upon the findings of fact that there are uh, unreasonable uh, restrictions placed upon the property by not allowing the variance. Again, the vote in favor is vote to approve the variance. Uh, finding that a uh, unreasonable restriction has been placed upon the property. Uh, Bernie Garitas? Yes. Uh, Mark Clements? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Our variance is approved by a three to zero vote. Okay, thank you, Mr. Prather, for, thank uh, you. for participating in the process. Thank you. Um, we move on now to uh, three variances, 2010-VAR-75, um, Clampett minimum lot size variance to Chapter 804, and 2010-VAR-76, the Clampett minimum lot width variance to Chapter 804, and 2010-VAR-77, the Clampett side set back variance to chapter 804 for a property at 9998. Oh, we did it. <laughs> Pardon me? Sorry, that was a previous petitioner. They're okay. excited that they got okay. the variance. <laughs> okay. Uh, 9998 South Chapel Hill Road. So staff, could you please uh, present this case? Absolutely. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Lynn. Um, so this petition is for a minimum lot size, minimum lot width, and a side yard setback. So the property is located in Polk Township, section 31, addressed off of South Chapel Hill Road, 9998. Uh, the property is currently zoned Forest Reserve. Um, the property is currently 3.75 acres. Uh, so the minimum requirement for the forest reserves uh, zoning is five acres. For the minimum lot width, uh, it's required that it has 200 feet width at building line. Um, the entire property, it's already developed. It has a single family residential home on it. It's, it's approximately 100 feet wide. 
and then so the petitioners are potential buyers and they are hoping to purchase the property dependent upon approval of these variances um, to and they hope to develop a, a detached garage on the property so there are, in order to do that they're requesting a side yard setback uh, there's 15 feet required in the forest reserve zone, and they're requesting a seven foot encroachment. So again, property is zoned forest reserve, and the comprehensive plan identifies it as rural residential. The property has a good amount of buildable area. It is already developed and has um, some slope a little bit um, towards kind of the middle. It's a little jagged line, it's an odd shape. Uh, in the middle and then towards the west at the very end of the property. When it comes to parcel size, it is not unusual. There are more than 10 parcels uh, in very close proximity that um, are under the five acre minimum that are also zoned forest reserve. So right now the property holds a 2100 square foot uh, single family residence that was built in 1960s. Um, the current owner was issued a building permit in January of 2019 for a residential addition. And from what we can tell based on the site visit and pictometry photos, it appears that um, there was originally an attached garage that was converted to residential space. So the petitioner's site plan, the potential buyers is on the left, that's showing their um, location of where they'd like to add the detached garage. Um, it seems like, you know, a natural kind of area, but, um, well, I'll get to that. So on the right are photos of, of what the property looks like right now. As you can see that it, there's kind of a natural area that does look like there was an attached garage. The gravel goes up to the building. Uh, there's no windows. It looks like, you know, a garage was sided in and turned into residential space. So staff recommends to approve the minimum lot size and the minimum lot width requirements from chapter 804. Uh, of course, um, based on the findings fact, but subject to Mon Monroe County Highway and drainage engineer reports. But um, we do recommend denial of this side yard setback requirement from chapter 804 from the, simply because they have adequate buildable area. Um, so there could be a detached garage that was possibly located behind their home um, within buildable area. Has anybody any questions? Thank you, Ms. Cresselius. Does anyone have questions for uh, Ms. Chris Elias? I do. Uh, so did you talk with the, prop, uh, the ones that are wanting to buy the property that they'd be willing to build a garage elsewhere? Or is this, is, is this they want the, the garage to be where they have asked for? So the, the site plan on, yeah, shown on the screen on the left, that's their ideal location. Um, but because I'm staff and I represent the ordinance and the comprehensive plan, there technically are alternative areas where they could build. So for that variance request, I have to recommend denial. Okay, thank you. And would you, uh, would you go to the, the aerial photo of the slope maps? So if they if if they were to build the garage in the back, they would. It's the scale is kind of hard to see, but would they be would they be pushed way back off those slopes, and then they build the driveway over the over the slopes behind the house? So they're not in an eco zone. So they are they are south of Lake Monroe, but they are not in an eco zone. So they're not restricted on uh, driveways uh, in slopes more than 15%. Um, so technically they could put a driveway past the house and build a detached garage. But it would have, but the, deta the detached garage would need to be outside of the red or not? 
it would have to be outside of the red. The red is depicting slopes greater than 15%, which is the countywide slope standard for structures. Right, and I understand, I, I understand that. So, uh, so in order, because anything in front, the slopes are less than 15%, but if they built it in the back, then they would be going way to the back, building a driveway back there behind the house, and then they'd have to bring, they basically have a detached garage they were using likely daily to get in and out of their house. They would have to walk back up from the backyard in order to get back to their house instead of putting it. How close do they exist? How close does it appear to the former garage? Is are they proposing the new structure? Um, I believe it's within ten feet of the existing home. And uh, yeah within seven feet of the property boundary. Sorry about that, I was going through the report. If they have, if they ended up building the detached garage behind the home outside the 15% slope, or if they wanted to build it in the 15% slope, excuse me, they would have to come back to the variance in order to get, get it close enough to the house. Is that correct? So they could build, so the technicality of it is that they could build a, a residential accessory structure. They have plenty of buildable areas. So they could build one there. And because it's not eco, they they can build a driveway that, so driveways, if you're not an eco, don't have, right, a, they can be right on the property boundary, as long as it's not on the neighbor's property. So there's no setback for that. So that's where the technicality comes in. Um, Technically, they could build an accessory structure behind the home that would meet setbacks. Whether it would be convenient um, to have a detached garage that far back, I don't know. That comes into questions of how maybe the petitioner wants to use that gar detached garage. Um, I mean, I, I would think, you know, detached garage, you park your vehicle and you walk your groceries inside, but that doesn't also represent every case. I, I don't have language from petitioners specifying exactly right. what they want to use that for. Right. So. Well, no, what I was getting at is, and I, I didn't very do a very good job, if, if they were to build behind their home, in order, if they wanted to build anywhere on the red, the actual structure, they would have to come in for a variance or not. Correct. If they were wanting to build, um, that's a, a fairly large drainage area. You can, I'm sure you can see from the contour lines and the labels. Um, they would have to come back for a buildable area variance from Chapter 804. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, is uh, the petitioner, Mr. Clampett here, or the petitioner's uh, representative, and would you like to address the board? So I'm gonna follow suit and try to do what Jackie did and check, see if I have a number. Okay. I, I did check in and it's not on there. So um, I don't I see them as an attendee. They're very uh, enthusiastic petitioner, so. <laughs> Unless they're calling from another number. Can they raise their hand on Zoom? Uh, to me, um, I would... I would uh, just say for the expedience of this uh, hearing, and um, it seems to me as though that's uh, quite a bit of practical difficulty that you demonstrated there, Bernie, through your um, questions. So I'd just like to give one more chance for members of the public to speak or the petitioner to speak. Uh, if, if there's anyone here to speak on behalf of the case, in favor of the case, or in opposition to the case, uh, please make yourself known. And if I may, Margaret, the Clampett case? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Just letting them, <laughs> maybe if they hear their name. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's not Paige, right? And that wasn't the petitioner's first name. Um, I, I'm, I don't remember his, um, his partner's name. I'm not sure. Okay. I've just requested to unmute the um, three people as attendees and no one is 
uh, unmuting. So I'm guessing that that means that they are not on the call. Okay, well then in that case, uh, we could either approve, disapprove, or continue the case. Uh, does anyone care to make a motion? I can make a motion. Thank you, Mr. Garitas. Okay, and you, you uh, tracked exactly my thought process there, uh, Margaret. So uh, I'm gonna do all three of these together. Uh, in the matter of uh, case 2010-VAR-75, case 2010-VAR-76, and 2010-VAR-77, Clampett minimum lot size variance to chapter 804, Clampett minimum lot with variance to chapter 804, and clamp it side setback variance to chapter 804, respectively, located at 9998 South Chapel Hill Road. I move approval of those variances based on the staff report and the findings of fact found there. And, and the practical oh, difficulties and the practical difficulties, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So Vicki, you second that? I second. Okay, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, the motion is on uh, petitions number 2010-VAR-75, 76, and 77. The uh, Clampett minimum lot area, minimum lot width, and side yard setback respectively. The motion is to approve all three variants and a uh, Affirmative vote is a vote to approve all variances. Uh, Margaret Clemens? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. And Giratas? You're, you're muted, Bernie. Sorry. Yeah, and an excellent, I, I vote yes and add that this is an excellent job by staff putting a very good petition together. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Cresselius. Okay, so we're moving on to the next case, case number 2010-VAR-78, the Burglar Buildable Area Variance from Chapter 804 at 3370 West Sacu Court. Yes, um, so this is a request uh, for a buildable area area variance from chapter 804 uh, for property located in Richland Township, section 22. Uh, so a summary of this petition, uh, the variance request is for the construction of a 36 foot by 26 foot accessory pool with deck, um, which would be outside of the buildable area uh, so in other words, uh, the location of the pool uh, is proposed in slopes greater than 15%. Um, I do want to note that the use as proposed is a permitted use in the uh, estate residential zoning district, which is what this uh, parcel is zoned. Uh, so the property is located at 3370 West Siku Court. Um, and it is zoned a state residential. The uh, parcel does contain quite a bit of slope, uh, which is 15% or greater in this case. Um, and the location of the proposed pool will impact slopes um, and therefore uh, would require a variance granted before the pool can be built. There's no FEMA on the uh, property and there is no, there are no known karst features. Uh, the comp plan has this parcel designated farm and forest. Uh, so the photo on the left, we are looking at the property, um, essentially the location of where the pool is proposed. Um, and then on the right, we've got our MS4 coordinator standing in the middle, um, 
kind of indicating uh, to a degree the, the slope. Um, so again, these are both locations of where the pool is planned. Uh, here we are looking uh, at the back of the petitioner's house. And I think the uh, shot on the left is good indication of sort of uh, the slope that's present in on the lot. Um, it's the lot has a kind of a ravine that that flows across or goes across um, pretty much the middle of the parcel. Um, so from the house, they go down uh, slope and then towards the back of the property, they walk up it. Um, and so the picture on the right is uh, showing, I, I shot the photo standing where essentially the pool is planned to be built. Um, trying to catch the slope there. Another shot of the back of the house and then another shot of this ravine um, that I was trying to describe. Um, again, the picture on the left is just um, actually showing sort of where the septic is. It's uh, closer to the house there um, in the left photograph. And then on the right, I'm just um, showing Siku Court uh, with the property marker sign. Here we have the letter to the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals that the petitioner submitted. Um, and then on the right, we've got his site planned. Um, so you can see, looking at this picture, uh, what he's proposing and where he's proposing to put a deck in a pool. It is a um, what's called a recessed pool, which is uh, a type of pool that's meant to accommodate slope or be built in slope. Um, and so, you can see the degree of slope that's on the parcel, except for running through the middle is, is um, no slope and that's the ravine. Uh, so this, this is a good illustration. Um, so given the slope situation out there, I wanted um, uh, the MS4 coordinator to come take a look. Um, so he went on a site visit with me and what he discovered while out there and then running calculations is that the drainage basin is uh, smaller than what he had imagined, uh, which, uh, you know, sort of allayed any concerns that he had. Um, and his biggest comment is, was making sure that that, uh, you know, that the, that the ravine isn't sort of blocked in any way um, with any sort of potential structure that might, uh, you know, be built to uh, to access the pool. Um, but he did say that he did not feel like the ravine, you know, collected any or a lot, very much water. Next slide. So um, based on our findings of fact, um, staff does recommend that uh, a denial of the design standards, um, again, primarily based on uh, finding C regarding practical difficulty and here in this case, um, you know, practical difficulties don't exist on the property uh, because it can the, the property can still be used as its primary in its primary functionality as a single family residence. Um, so again, uh, just honoring the ordinance um, and based on this, you know, fact uh, that we feel there is no practical difficulty, we're recommending denial. Thank you. Are there any questions? The members of the board have questions for Ms. Payne. Bernie, you're still muted, I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks, Margaret. I was going back and forth between the, the petition and the, or the documents and the Zoom anyway. Rebecca, is there, uh, what, what were the recommended motions by the drainage engineer? Um, he said he, he did not have any concerns. He just um, wanted to make sure that the pool um, would be outside of any drainage easements, which there are none on the property. Um, and again, just making sure uh, that the, the, the ravine doesn't get blocked up in any way. Yeah, thank you very much. Not recommendations, but uh, recommended conditions. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions for Ms. Payne? So, uh, well, is the petitioner present, Mr. Burglar, and would you like to address the board? 
I think I do see the petitioner um, and I'm asking them to unmute. It looks like they've called in. So if you see on your phone, Mr. Burglar, I'm gonna press ask to unmute. You have to look at your phone and unmute to talk. Can you hear us? Tech services, is there anything else that we're missing on this one? Are they connected okay? Uh, it looks like um, their audio is enabled. Um, however, it could be something like uh, there's a pair of headphones attached to the phone. And so it's trying to choose the wrong mic. Are you, are you here? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, Mr. Burglar, okay. would you please state your name and raise your right hand? My name is, my name is Paul Burglar. And, uh, and I raise my right hand. Thank you. Do I uh, swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. And uh, please uh, address the board and uh, what you'd like to do and how you'd like to do it and why you'd like to do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, at least we've got over the technical hurdles. Um, I just wanted to say that the concern seemed to be about a bridge or something that would uh, stop the flow of water down in the ravine. And it very rarely gets that wet down there, but we don't want, want water down there to begin with. So I have no plans to put a bridge. If I did anything, it would be, we would put like a foot bridge with river rock and flat stones, um, things like that, maybe some riff rock. I also understand there would be a concern that if someone bought the house after us, which we have no intention of leaving, um, but that they would want to do something that you would not like. But we would try to do landscaping in a way that no one would want to change that. I think if you see the pictures that you've uh, got in the report, we've used the river rock and things like that before in our landscaping, and I'm pretty sure it, will, it should be no problem to do it. And if there was a problem the first time, if we, we saw that it was retaining water, we'd simply just change it and, you know, redo it because we don't want water down there. So if that's your concern, it's ours too. Also, um, there are three other pools in the neighborhood. I don't see any problem with that. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Does anyone have questions for Mr. Burglar? If there's none, um, I'd like to um, just ask if there are any other members of the public who would like to speak in either support or opposition to this petition. Then I bring it back to the board for further discussion and or a recommendation. Rebecca, I've got a quick question. This is Bernie. Uh, what are the site plan or what are the, the permit requirements for the, they have to file for a pool permit, don't they? Rebecca, you may be muted. Oh, I said yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so they have there'll be a review by the building department. Does planning look at that also? Uh, well, yeah, usually, although since it's going through the variance process, um, I mean, we've already laid eyes on it at this point, so we're we're reviewing it right now, essentially. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, is there a motion on this case? We can make one. Thank you, Mr. Garitas. Okay, in the matter of uh, case number 2010-VAR-78, the burglar buildable area variance from chapter 804 located at 3370 West Secure Court. I move that we approve the variance based on 
the findings of fact found in the staff report, practical difficulties have been met uh, with the following conditions. One, that the, that the pool or its deck not be constructed in any documented drainage easement. And two, that, uh, that there be no obstructions from the construction of that amenity uh, in the, that would obstruct the flow in the drainage way that goes behind the home proposed that's between the proposed pool and the home. And three, that the MS4 operator uh, be given the opportunity and, and approves the location and the plan of the pool as submitted by the petitioner. I second. I will call the vote. Uh, this is uh, on petition 2010 DPR 78, regular billable area variance from chapter 804. Uh, the motion is approved based on the finding with the change of the finding of that there is practical difficulty with utilizing the site that justifies the grain of the bill's parent variance with the following conditions that the pool and deck is constructed, not affect any recorded drainage easement uh, to not interfere with the natural drainage of the, uh, the site. And three, that the improvement location permit be reviewed by the MS4 operator. Did I catch that all, Bernie? Beautifully done, Larry. Thank you. Again, a motion, motion in favor is a motion to approve with the alternative finding of practical difficulties and with the conditions set forth. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Barbara Clements? Yes. Variance is approved with the conditions set forth. Thank you, Mr. Burglar. Thank you for. Thank you very much. Enjoy your pool. <laughs> I sure will. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, we have two more cases to hear tonight. And um, the first one yeah. involves um, two variances. And that would be case number 2010-VAR-79, the Ernst Side Yard Setback Variance from Chapter 833, and 2010-VAR-80, the Ernst Buildable Area Variance from Chapter 804, and that's at 4621 North Shelburne Drive. So, um, staff, I don't, I don't have on my screen who's presenting this right now but um, would you please present the case to us? Thanks, Margaret. It's me, Rebecca, presenting oh, thank it. you, Rebecca. Um, yeah, so this is a petition with two variance requests. Um, the first request is for a variance to the side yard setback requirement. And the second request is for a variance to the buildable area related to 15% slope regulations. Um, and the petitioner is requesting these variances in order to expand her existing attached garage. Uh, this new garage expansion would uh, is measured at 12 feet by 22 feet. Um, so currently this uh, property is zoned RS 3.3 and requires an eight foot side yard setback um, and what the petitioner is proposing based on the location of the garage addition is a two foot setback. So the uh, petition site is located at 4621 North Shelbourne Road. It's zoned RS 3.5 and contains about four or five acres. There are no known karst features on the lot um, and no FEMA floodplain, but there is some slope uh, which will be impacted by the proposed location of the garage expansion. Um, and then comp plan has this parcel designated as Makua Suburban Residential. Here are some site photos. The left picture, we are looking at the location of the proposed garage. Uh, so again, it would be an addition off of the existing garage. Um, in the right picture, it's looking at, again, looking at the location of the garage just shot at a different angle. 
here we are looking at the gra existing garage from across the street and the right picture is looking north towards the driveway. The left picture is showing the lot um, on the opposite side of the garage. Uh, and then the right picture is another shot looking east towards the, again, the location of the garage. Um, and something interesting about this house is that it seems to be um, situated on the lot towards the east side. Um, no, sorry, towards the north side. So it's not quite centered in the lot. And here we are just looking at North Shelbourne Drive with uh, the property marker signs. Um, this is the letter submitted by the petitioner to the Board of Zoning Appeals. And on the right, we've got the site plan. So you can see uh, on the north side of the property where the garage is proposed, um, it's leaving about two feet of setback. And also you can see that it's uh, built on it, uh, in some slopes. So this, uh, this exhibit did not make it into your reports, um, but I definitely wanted to include it in the presentation. It was uh, just given to me uh, uh, um, recently. Um, so the petitioner is in the process of getting a uh, survey boundary completed by a professional. Um, and so this is just a preliminary, uh, some preliminary documentation that she was able to get and give to me um, just clarifying that, uh, you know, clarifying the boundary lines and also clarifying that the, the garage um, addition is in fact totally on her parcel. There was um, some concern that without knowing the exact boundary lines, you know, we might face um, the issue of her building over boundary lines, but it doesn't appear to be um, like that's going to happen. So I did just want you to be able to see this preliminary survey. Um, so again, it was kind of a timing thing. She's working on getting it certified and completed, but um, it's just it just didn't happen in time for the meeting tonight. So the, um, regarding the recommended motion, um, this is another case where staff is actually denying the design standards variance to the side yard setback. Um, this is from chapter 833. Uh, Again, based specifically on finding C regarding practical difficulty. And here we found that there is not a practical difficulty um, because a change in the design of the proposed addition could alleviate the need for either the side yard setback variance or the slope variance. Um, and again, um, regarding the buildable area variance request, we recommend denial. Um, finding C again regarding practical difficulty. So uh, this idea that there is uh, other, another location on her property um, where she could conceivably build or uh, you know, add a garage addition um, on the lot that would not you know, violate the step back or buildable area. Are there any questions? I have a question okay. um, on, on that one picture of showing the garage and then the extra pavement to the side. What, does the person have to get a permit to put that extra pavement or was that just something you can do? There, where the truck is sitting. You know, it's like, like the driveway that Ann mentioned earlier. It's okay you know, to put concrete down, um, just okay. needs to be on her property. Okay. Are there any other questions of staff? And if there's none, uh, is Ms. Ms. Ernst here and would you like to address the board? I do see Paige on the call. I'm gonna ask you to unmute Paige. Can you hear us? Hi, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Um, uh, would you please state your name and raise your right hand? Paige Ernst. And uh, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'd like to hear your comments. Um, so I'm just 
trying to add this third bay onto my existing garage. I'm just trying to provide a safer and additional covered area for parking at my house. Um, my driveway is very steep in which the pictures are kind of hard to totally tell exactly how steep um, the driveway is, but it just can get very slick in the winter time. And there's a big nut tree located right over where that truck is parked that has a lot of nuts that fall and kind of hit and um, anything that's kind of parked out there. So it's an older home. Um, it was built about 45 years ago. So the inside space of the existing garage is just very small. And so we're just looking to kind of take out that wall there and just add one more bay onto the side just to have an additional place for some parking. Um, and like she mentioned with the surveying, um, just all of this will be on my property, just getting a little closer to the property line. So I understand the denials um, for why that was the request. Um, but I am just with, there's not really, a, if putting it on the other side of the house can go without needing a variance, but there's really not a logical way to be able to have access to the garage over there with the driveway being on the other side. Um, so that's kind of why that's my only plan of the location for putting the garage. Um, so unless anybody else has questions, I think that was really all I had to add. Okay, does anyone have any questions for Ms. Ernst? I've got a, I think a brief question. So Ms. Ernst, when you say it's gonna be two feet off the property line, if you haven't had the survey done yet, how do you know that? So the survey has actually been done. Um, it is just still going through the official back end paperwork to have the official stamp on it. They just went ahead and sent me the preliminary drawing that is in the process of becoming official. Um, so it's just gonna take another couple weeks for that process to finish. And actually when they did come survey, um, I did find out that it's actually gonna be a little over two feet. I thought, as you can see on this survey here, that front corner, I have about 14.37 and the garage I'm adding on is going to be 12 feet there. So in the front, I'll actually have a little over two feet. And then in the back, I'm gonna have even some additional space just due to the house not really sitting square on the lot. But the surveyor has been out and actually conducted the survey. They're just finishing um, the paperwork. And this is a licensed surveyor that's, that's doing this for yes. you? Yes. Well, I think the location of the, uh, sorry, Margaret, go ahead. No, I have no, I wanted to hear what you had to say. I'm just a little restless. <laughs> no, that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Vicki, do you have any questions? No. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Ms. Ernst. Is there, I'd like to ask if there's any member of the public either in favor or in opposition to this request? I don't think, I don't know. I can't At see. this point, Margaret, we don't have anybody left. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Well, uh, I bring it back to us for further discussion and or a motion. I have a question though, I, th that came to my mind. Yes. Should we wait for the, ori uh, the uh, original uh, survey uh, or the main survey so that we know for sure everything's right? Or do we, is it okay to go ahead with just a preliminary survey if we want to approve it? If, if if I end up making a motion on this and, and it looks like that we're if, if we were making a motion to approve, I can probably craft a motion that would rest our mind in, in a couple of different scenarios if that's helpful. Okay. Thank you, Bernie. That would be helpful. That would be helpful, Mr. Garitas. I think it's a good location for the for the garage. It is an older home. Uh, what we need now is different than what we needed 30 or 45 years ago when the house was built. It's an opportunity to get another car off the driveway, which we have oils and different things that come out that will drain into the roadway with the way it's situated now. If they end up putting the garage on the west side, on the on the living side of the house, then they have to have a driveway or something go to the front or petition for another driveway permit, which they would not obtain likely from the highway department. So I think there are practical difficulties here. 
Thank you. So um, would you like to make a motion then? I can do that. Okay, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Okay, in the matter of 2010-VAR-79 and 2010-VAR-80, first Ernst side yard setback variance from chapter 833 and Ernst buildable area variance from chapter 804 respectively uh, located at 4621 North Shelburne Drive. I move that we approve the variance based on practical difficulties and uh, the staff report, the findings of fact found therein, but I, one condition that prior to any issuance of an IP uh, improvement location permit uh, that the survey be completed demonstrating that the 22 by 12 structure uh, can fit within the property with no less than a two foot setback. So my point there being that we limit the size of the structure to 12 by 22, regardless of what the side yard setback is, but it cannot be less than two feet. So if it's, if it's, uh, if it's two and three eighths of an inch, which is what their preliminary survey sh plan shows, it's still 12 by 22. They don't pick up the other three eighths of an inch or a foot or whatever the other survey may find. So that, that's my motion. I second. Okay. I will call the roll on uh, petition number 2010 VR 79 and 80, the Earth's side yard and Earth's billable area variances, respectively. The motion is to approve both variances uh, based upon the staff report with the change in the finding regarding that there is practical difficulties in regard to utilizing the property that justifies the granting of both development standards variances uh, and subject to the condition that the uh, a certified survey show that the garage is located uh, no closer than two feet to the side yard shown on the survey. Uh, the variance is up to a maximum of two feet to the side yard uh, based upon the uh, certified survey that will be produced prior to the issuance of an approval location. But again, the motion in favor is a vote to approve both permits with the uh, revised finding and the uh, conditions set forth uh, in the motion. Bernie Garitas. Larry, friendly, just a friendly correction on that, uh, that, that the addition to the garage not exceed 12 by 22 okay. as well. Okay, and, and further that the uh, building not exceed 22 by 12 uh, in measurement. Thank you. Okay, again, a vote in favor is about to approve all both variances with the condition. Uh, Bernie Garitas? Yes. Mary Clements? Yes. And Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Motion carry three zero. Okay. Thank you everyone for uh, all of your good work so far. We have one final case, I believe, this evening, and that's case number 2010-VAR-82. It's the Turner minimum lot size variance from chapter 80, 804, and it's at uh, 9750 South Dutch Ridge Road. Thank you, Margaret. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. All right. So this is the Turner minimum lot size variance, chapter 804. The petition site is 3.21 acres located in Polk Township at 9750 South Dutch Ridge Road. The petitioner is requesting a design standards variance in order to uh, construct a 20 by 25 foot carport on the property. Um, the design standard sought to be varied is the minimum lot size requirement for the forest reserve zone, which is five acres. And as I stated before, this petition site contains only 3.12, or excuse me, 3.21 acres. That's a typo. Um, moving along to the location map, it's in Polk Township, section 34. Um, there are two parcels here. They're all one lot of record. Um, the current zoning is forest reserve. The comprehensive plan has it designated as farm and forest. Site conditions, the petition site contains an approximate 938 square foot single family residence 
a 960 square foot pole barn, a utility shed, and a lean-to. The petition site has access to water and ut utilizes septic. Um, it has access off of South Dutridge Road. Um, there's no FEMA floodplain. There's no karst, no known karst features. Um, it's not in the eco area. Um, slopes are not of a concern for this property. Um, and on this map, you can see um, um, in this one here, the parcel size map. Um, you can note that there are multiple other parcels in the area um, that do not meet this minimum uh, five acre requirement for the FR zone. Here are some site photos of the uh, driveway cut off of South Dutch Ridge Road. Uh, photographs going up the driveway. Uh, the carport will be placed to the left going up to the driveway. Um, and then in the right photograph here is the single family residence. Here are some photographs of the site where the carport will go. Uh, the petitioner did put some stakes out there uh, to show the approximate location they wish to construct the carport. Um, and then in the bottom right photograph was just a different angle to show you where that is. Um, here is the petitioner's letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals requesting the minimum lot size variance, as well as stating their intention to build the carport uh, 20 by 25 feet. Um, here is a site plan that I helped the petitioner make uh, for the carport. Um, these numbers on here are measured by the petitioner. Uh, we talked back and forth to make sure we got these numbers right. Um, and I think that it um, shows pretty much where that carport's going to go and in relation to any property line issues or any septic tank issues. Overall, staff recommends approval of the design standards variance for minimum lot size requirement from Chapter 804 of the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance based on the findings of fact and subject to the Monroe County Highway and Drainage Engineer reports. I will not take any questions. Does anyone have questions for Drew? I've got a question, Drew. What are the filing fees for this, roughly, for this petition? A design standards variance petition filing fee is $200 uh, for the first variance. Um, and the additional variance is $50 extra. Um, and then there is an $8.50 fee for the petition sign. So for this particular petition itself, it's $208.50. Thanks. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, is Mr. Turner here? And would I, you I believe that he is, um, and his phone number ends in 7406. Mr. Turner, if you can see your phone, I'm going to ask you to unmute. And if you just press the unmute button, you should be able to talk. Uh, yeah, this is Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner, would you please state your name and raise your right hand? Uh, Mike Turner. And uh, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Well, we'd like to hear from you about what you, about your case and what you're doing. Uh, I applied for a permit for a carport, uh, uh, and they told me my minimum lot size wasn't big enough. I only had 3.1 acres, one, two acres. And I had to have a five, so that I had to apply for a variance. To, and I just uh, basically I'm trying to get a carport to park my cars under, and that's uh, that's what I'm after. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you. Does anyone have questions for Mr. Turner? And if there's none, thank you, Mr. Turner, for making your case to us. And I'd like to open up the floor to any other member of the community, either in favor or in opposition to this request. And I don't believe there's anyone else in the lineup. Is there, Jackie? No. OK. Well, back to us. Uh, is there a motion on this um, uh, request? I can, I can make one. Thank you, Mr. Garitas. Uh, and this is another one, I think, just for the record, uh, would be a nice use for a hearing officer potential. Uh, 
at least for consideration there. But anyway, matter of 2010-VAR-82, Turner minimum lot size variance from chapter 804, 9750 South Dutch Ridge Road. I move approval of the variance based on the staff report and the findings of fact found therein. Second. Mr. Wilson. The roll, uh, the, the motion is to approve the variance for 2010-VR-82, the Turner minimum lot size variance. A vote in the favor is a vote to approve the variance. Uh, Margaret Clemens? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Rudy Garatox? Yes. Thank you very much. So the motion is passed. Mr. Turner, thank you for coming before us and your request for a carport, um, despite the lot size restrictions, um, has been approved. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Mr. Mr. Turner, I've got a quick question. What is the cost of your, just a general cost of your carport? I'm just curious. About uh, $3,500. Okay. Will you be putting that together yourself or is that, are you going to hire that done? It, it comes, uh, that's, they install it and anchor it. They put it together uh, and install it and anchor it. Excellent. Well, good luck with it. I was just, just kind of curious from my knowledge. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Thank okay. you. Well, everyone, we've had quite an evening and we got through a lot of good cases and a lot of great work by staff and the wonderful questions by the board. I, I'm very grateful to everyone's hard work. And um, if there's a motion to adjourn or if there's any other business we need to discuss, um, let's have at it either way. <laughs> I, I did just want to note that uh, we are scheduled to receive uh, the initial draft of uh, the administrative procedures for the new uh, development ordinance for the county. And that should include the, the BZA procedures as well. And uh, my guess is, Bernie, we will have provision, provisions set forth for a hearing officer in those drafts, just to let you know. Uh, the other thing we're looking at is just ways to maybe avoid the need for variances uh, for pre-existing lots of record. Uh, again, it, it's very difficult because it's often difficult to determine what exactly is a pre-existing lot of record in this county because there, there was so much parcelization that went on for many years. Uh, and there are many lots that may have not been created legally according to the subdivision ordinance that was in place at the time. But we're looking at that option. Uh, and you also note that we have tried to uh, kind of speed up our presentations as far as not going through the report in detail. Uh, I think you're going to see more of that and probably we'll see a more condensed uh, EZA report in the future. Uh, so, well, so all of the staff have been. Fast. All of the staff have really been doing a remarkable and professional and thorough job and I'm really grateful to them. Yes. So, Thank you. So is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> oh, Bernie, Ber oh, <laughs> oh, Bernie, I was going to do that for the change. <laughs> well, Thank I was waiting here. I, I waited several <laughs> times on you, Vicki, and you kind of let me down. So I, 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 just, know, I was afraid I, Margaret. I, I was afraid Margaret would put the hammer down if we didn't keep moving. So I just jumped in. Well, I, you don't know how much I appreciate it. One day I'm going to surprise you and do a motion. <laughs> but I, I always learn from Bernie's motions. You I know. know. I, I write down everything he's saying so I can learn one day. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a motion on the table. <laughs> oh, yeah. Second. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank okay. you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.